I feel the liftoff. The clock has started. All right here. Okay, moon bases. This is the second unboxing tonight, and this particular toy is still in its bubble wrap that it came in. Um, this one came from America. The last one was from Italy. Uh, this one I was assisted in purchasing from my good friend Mr. Ed Berg who also has an excellent toy blog called Toys and Stuff. Ed is a totally brilliant photographer and takes the best all round 360 degree series of photographs of toys I've ever seen. So just taking the bubble wrap off and see what it is. Well it's further wrapped in what looks like cling film and a bin liner. So I'm just going to snip through the cling film or even tear through it. Uh, you don't often see cling film used as packaging but I suppose it's really quite good. Uh, I'm struggling to actually get it off so I'm going to attempt to uncling it. It seems to be working right. Oh, I'm banging it around rather a lot. We have now got a black, what looks like a coffin. Oh, it's a bit, it's an actual carrier bag. Right, let's have a look. What have we got? We have got the space tract. Wow. The space tract. Well, I've been after one of these for years. It is one of those unusual knockoffs of the Project Sword Space Glider, of which there are about half a dozen. This is one of them. Let's have a look at the box. It says by Mego. It is by Mego, and they're also telling us to buy Mego. It is a battery operated space tract, number 5020, made in Hong Kong. The box has seen better days, but I'm hoping I can maybe do something about that. It says it's battery operated bump and go action, jet sound, tail light, nose antenna. That's interesting, the nose antenna. Not many of the rip-offs of the space glider have bothered with the nose antenna, but it sounds like this one does. There's a little diagram there of how to operate the battery action. And you'll notice on the cover that there is a strange globe attached to the rear. This is what makes the space tract unusual. The globe. So, let's have a look inside. Take the lid off. Yet more packaging. The seller did a great job. Packaging this up. Lots of polystyrene chips. Save them for a later date. Some more bubble wrap. And chip it out gently. The box is a cardboard base, coffin box style. And here we have it. It is a lovely looking thing. It looks in good nick. But I can already see there's no nose antenna. Just going to check the box. Uh, I can't remember what the description said. I'm probably not even sure that I was aware it had a nose antenna. Uh, that is striking me as probably something that I didn't know. Anyway, uh, let's have a look. So it's clearly a space glider based on the Project Sword version 
looks a lot like it apart from these vents on the rather bulbous uh, back canopy behind the cockpit. Uh, it's got the classic space glider rear illumination, uh, a bit like a 1950s car it always reminds me of. And here we have that strange space club which makes this probably the most unusual of all the space glider bootlegs basically the globe is a plastic a plastic um, sphere with an astronaut sat inside at a console and I've only just realised, I didn't know this, that the globe is in effect the on off switch uh, which it has been sort of placed over. I don't think it could come off. So that's an unusual feature that I didn't know. That is the on off switch. That's rather neat. Um, the astronaut in the main cockpit uh, has come out of his seat probably on the lengthy journey from um, the project so moon base to earth and back to moon base and we'll have a look at the battery operated mechanism underneath bump and go here's the battery unit itself nice Oh, that's very clean looking. That looks excellent. So, um, batteries. What have I done with them? Got one there. Old oh, Panasonic. There might be another one over here that's taken out of a clock. Two batteries. Let's have a look. Let's put them in. Tells me how to do it, plus or minus. And they are far too small. Have I got the big versions? I do have some in my trusty box of tricks. I can't believe that these, these humdingers are required. This thing's going to go in orbit like Elon Musk's Falcon Heavy. Right. Let's put these bad boys in. These batteries are huge. You forget that so many space toys took massive batteries before you could do anything with them. Now that thing feels incredibly tight. I wonder if modern batteries are bigger than their 60s counterparts. Um, anyway, it's in, but it's tight. Okay, the moment of truth, I'm going to switch it on. Oh, it worked! <laughs> right, I've turned it off, because I'm just going to see if there's a different setting on the old bubble for the lights, because they did not come on. Well, the jet sound works. Sounds like a bit like a strangled chinchilla. Uh, the lights aren't working. That could be because of the batteries. I'm going to give it a bit of a shake. No, there's nothing untoward wobbling about inside its entrails. So it could be the batteries uh, which I'll have to invest in. Getting some new ones. Uh, don't ever seem to have a lot of batteries around anymore. Uh, everything these days gets charged up. Humans will get charged up one day, although I will probably forget to charge myself and that'll be that. Right, 
So folks, that is the space tract. Just a little word about the actual name. I have no idea what space tract means. To me, tract is a piece of land, as in a tract of land. Uh, whether it's short for traction or tractor, I don't know. The company Mego, as we know as uh, lovers of vintage toys, were, were mostly famous for their fantastic world's greatest superheroes uh, action figures, which are collected devotedly by many eager fans. Whether this is the same Mego as that, or whether this is uh, some lesser Mego in Hong Kong, I'm not sure. There are other Mego toys from Hong Kong um, that I've seen. So, there we have it, the space tract. I hope you enjoyed that unboxing. And... It's goodbye from me, and it's goodbye from the space track. Yay! Goodbye. I think we need to do a little more all-weather testing. Amen.